Has this ever happened to you? You're innocently playing flash games, having a great time, when this odd thumbnail pops up. Is it technically inappropriate? No, but it gives you this feeling, this feeling like you ought to not be caught playing it. You check over your shoulder, no one's there, and you begin the game. You check over your shoulder again, and you lose because you have to keep your eyes focused on this type of game. You play again. Somebody comes into the room, you close the tab. You wait for them to leave, and you begin again. And therefore, you enter a situation where you are simultaneously playing the game on your computer and in real life. Our topic today, kissing and flirting games. Now, what is it about these games that makes people react like this? I suspect that the combination of romance feeling slightly taboo when you're a child, and the fact that this is framed as doing something that you're not supposed to, contributes to this odd reaction. Other games with romantic theming didn't tend to feel so forbidden. However, this taboo aspect created a lightning rod of popularity for these flash game websites. There's few things more enticing to a child than doing something that you're not supposed to and being protected from any real-life consequences. Well, unless your parents didn't approve of you playing these games, and I know that plenty didn't. Some were perturbed by the kissing aspect, and others by the troublemaking aspect, so not everyone's paranoia about getting caught playing these games was completely unjustified. Something unusual about Flash games, in comparison to other gaming mediums, is that there's very little metatextual information. For most other types of games, there's some kind of discussion about the precise definitions of individual genres and what exactly it means for a game to be categorized into one. But the discussion of games as a concept, which is usually present for console games, PC games, and even usually mobile games, is largely absent for Flash games. I find this a real shame because I have no doubt that there are some well-established game genres that exist mostly in the form of these browser games. This includes today's topic, the kissing and flirting game genres. Kissing games derive from the more broad slacking category, which basically describes a reaction time game where you do something that you're not supposed to. Unlike other slacking games where the objective is to grab a bite to eat, or goof off, or engage in complex rituals of self-sabotage, kissing games revolve around getting a little smooch from your loved one while trying not to get caught. The kissing genre sets itself apart from the slacking genre because of the sheer amount and specificity of these types of games, becoming, in my estimation, easily the largest subtype of the slacking genre. These games are highly simple, using extremely straightforward reaction time controls. These games typically only have one level, or extremely minimal variance between the different levels. Flirting games, on the other hand, occasionally employ a slacking mechanic, but tend to follow a different, even more specific pattern of game design, which is pulled directly from one particular series of games. As far as I can tell, the kissing genre simply did not exist until 2006. Before this, the only information I can find are about real-life kissing games like Spin the Bottle. Because of the general lack of reference material available for Flash games, I can't say with absolute confidence that I know the first games in the kissing and flirting genres. However, there are two games that seem to have appeared the earliest, and most importantly, set the pattern for the immense wave of copycat games that would eventually follow. These two games are Office Kissing and Romance Academy Heartbeat of Love. Office Kissing has a broad array of translated titles, including Kissing at Work, Secret Office Kissing, Office Lovers Kissing, and so on. Not conveyed in these English titles is a pun present in the original. The word office in this title is written as officeu instead of officeu. Therefore, the most literal possible translation of this title would be off kiss love. The instructions read approximately, I'm a fourth year employee at a mid-sized trading company. I've gotten used to my job and have a bit more leeway now. Oh, she's exactly my type. A new employee, Office Lady Chan, has just been hired. I get the feeling that my department manager is a bit of a dunce. Hey, while he's turned around, I can sneak a kiss. Well, fourth year employee couldn't be able to win her heart by six? And therefore, we have the names of our cast. Office Lady Chan, fourth year employee Kun, and department manager. The credits in this portion are for some reason inconsistent depending on where the source file is being hosted, but by decompiling the file I was able to view a more comprehensive credit in this screen which credits the scripting and visuals to Team Tamasaki. Unfortunately, I was not able to find any further information about this team or their projects. The gameplay itself is extremely simple. There's only one level and only one control. Simply click to kiss your coworker while your boss is looking away. Oh. Oh, he's kind of quick. Let's try again. Oh. Jesus, I felt like I didn't even get a chance. Yeah, this one's kind of hard. Actually, no, this one's... This one's kind of ridiculously hard. 
You really only have a split second to react to the boss putting the phone down, and you have to keep it up until the clock reaches 6, which is a substantial amount of time. I hate to admit it, but I think actually completing this one is a bit beyond me. There's one other screen that I can access without putting an unjustifiable amount of effort into completing this game. The lose screen if you make it to the end of the day but get a rock bottom score shows the woman going home with the boss. Well, no need to waste any more time trying to complete it, I can just reference someone else's footage. They lost. And they did too. This one's not even long enough to complete the level one time. Yeah, yeah they lost. What about office kissing game win? Oh my god. Oh my god, this is bad. Not a single one of them makes it to the end of the day. Wait, not all hope is lost. Afi, Chu, Rabu. Yes! They did it! They won! As you can see, if you manage to make it to the end of the day with a high enough score, you get a windscreen where you're implied to go home with the office lady, which really highlights your impressive smoochers. One other Japanese uploader managed to make it to the end of the day, but not quite win. This results in a screen where the office lady just goes home for the day as usual. This means that the win threshold is somewhere in between 1400 and 1700. That's the entirety of the game. As you can see, it's extremely simple, but something about it was just extremely catchy. First, it looks nice. Unlike many of its successor games, the character designs are genuinely cute and nice to look at. The fact that it's so damn difficult also makes it playable for a much longer amount of time compared to other kissing games. People will be compelled to try again and again until they get it right or eventually give up. Perhaps it's not a remarkable game on its own, but the fact that it went on to cause this massive wave of copycat games turned it into an icon of the Flash gaming era. Now, if office kissing was the spark that kicked off the kissing games trend, where did all these games where you walk around and brainwash people come from? Well, let's talk about Romance Academy Heartbeat of Love. Often westernized as school flirting game, this game focuses on a protagonist who walks around the school and makes hapless boys fall in love using her mind-controlling eye beam. This game has an English localization, which goes to show how popular it became. I believe the English version is only available as an HTML5 adaptation. Our protagonist has no name, no stated purpose, and not much information in general. All you know is that her objective is mass romantic conquest. These games were developed by Shockwave Japan, a Flash game developer and aggregator that became defunct in early 2009. The only game out of the three to have credits is the Beach game. It's likely, but not confirmed, that these are the same developers that worked on all of the games. The names listed there will be on screen. You move around the floors by clicking on the right or left side of your character, going faster if you click further away. When you spot a boy, you hold down the mouse to subjugate him. There's a girl visible on your screen, she'll contest you for his affections, and you'll have to rapidly click the mouse to win. Teachers may appear on various floors, which you'll need to avoid if you don't want to lose hearts. Teachers will not be affected by seeing you flirt. This game will spawn several special popular boys, which are more challenging to win over because they're swarmed by rival girls. They're easier to take down if you have the beauty time bonus active, which begins when the heart meter at the top of the screen becomes full. With this power-up, you gather hearts much more quickly and also move much faster. This game has a much more accessible difficulty level than the first one we looked at. I tried one round where I just sat there and ran out the clock, and I got the same win screen as if I'd played the game normally but hadn't romanced any of the popular boys. If you get one of the popular boys, you get a windscreen where he pulls you around in a chariot. Alternately, you're seen being pushed on a cart. If you get two of the popular boys, your windscreen shows you being carried in a palanquin. One ending that I wasn't able to get myself is this one where you're being pulled in a butterfly-shaped light-up carriage. While this game is easy to play and complete, it's definitely a challenge to achieve total victory. It seems in order to get this ending, you need to backtrack a bit and go down the first floor from the left side of the second. If you do this, you'll see a special blonde rival character who appears to have the same power level as a group of regular girls. The Romance Academy series has two other entries. The first one I'm going to translate as Festival Flirting Game, because the standard translation uses a word that is offensive in this context. This one is set at a summer festival. Unlike the first game, this one uses a flat, looping layout. If you go from the left of the starting point, you'll run into a guy selling kitsune masks, which give you immunity from encountering a teacher one time. Seeing her running around brainwashing people in this mask... <sighs> in order of achievement, the victory states are being surrounded by an entourage of boys, being carried in a palanquin, being paddled in a fancy boat. <laughs> I love the guy with the hose. And finally, the total victory, the procession dances on a huge shrine dedicated to the player character as she luxuriates on top. The special boy in this game is a ghost who requires a very fast reaction time to catch as he only appears for a few seconds. 
After you capture the ghost boy, a jealous ghost girl will appear and start following you around. If you attempt to enter beauty time with a ghost girl in tow, you'll be knocked down and damaged instead. I think I'll take this moment to say that I can absolutely understand why this series of games blew up the way it did. It looks really good. The graphics in this game are top-notch for Flash. This character is so simple and yet so memorable. The environments and backgrounds are very well done, and the music is great too. Unlike its many copycats, I have never noticed any major flaws in the game controls either. A Twitter user pointed out to me that there's an alternate version of this game with a special protagonist. This was a high score contest winner and represents a real-life Shockwave user named Mokako. This girl, called Moko in this game, takes over for the role of the usual protagonist in this remake and has a sunflower power-up instead of lilies. Other than that, the game is identical to the original festival game. This game was originally only available on Shockwave Premium, but now can be viewed for free. Next, let's take a look at the game typically translated as Beach Flirting Game. The gameplay is fundamentally the same, but the challenge is focused more strongly on competing with your rivals, in which one will appear to compete with you for nearly every boy. If you flirt with the snorkel equipment guy, you'll gain a snorkeling mask, which gives the same immunity status as the festival game. Unlike the first game in these windscreens, the protagonist is only surrounded by the popular boys, although she has her standard posse if she doesn't manage to captivate any of the popular ones during that round. This game has a flat level layout again, only allowing the character to move from side to side, moving through three looping rooms. An ocean, a nature trail, and a boardwalk. The character you need along with the popular boys for total victory is this lifeguard. In order to encounter him, you'll need to intentionally be knocked over, either by a teacher or by losing a showdown with a rival girl. Once he shows up to help you, you can hit him with your beams. If you manage to fill his heart meter in time, he'll decide that he didn't actually have anything more important to do and join your herd of mindless followers. In the end screen, you can be seen walking down the beach with an entourage of normal boys, intertubing one-on-one -on -one with one of the senpais, going parasailing with two of them, and one random guy who gets to drive the boat, or the total victory which is being pampered by all of the popular boys and the lifeguard on a cruise ship. So this game doesn't exactly have lore, per se. Like the devilish hairdresser games, the only information about these characters exists within their Flash games, in which here there are only three fundamentally identical games and a dubiously canon spin-off. However, I just can't help myself from feeling a little… unsettled when I look at this protagonist. Like, she seems kind of evil, right? The way she looks past everyone and everyone looks past her, the issues of questionable consent with this whole laser beam brainwashing mechanic, the way their seemingly lifeless bodies fall to the ground before being reanimated by sheer force of attraction, their barely sentient bodies floating helplessly behind her. Maybe the eye beam thing is just a visual representation of a person's natural attractiveness, but is it? Certainly nobody else is able to do it quite like the protagonist, unless you're just not trying. Well, there's certainly one straightforward explanation to these games. It's just a cartoony representation of flirting, end of story. That's probably the real answer, but I'm literally already done explaining that. So I have two separate but related alternative explanations for these games. First, I think maybe this girl is a demon. She's not remarkably different from the other girls we see in the game, and yet her ability to captivate the boys in her class clearly outmatches any of them to a suspicious degree. None of the other girls seem particularly interested in amassing these huge amounts of admirers. They'll compete with you if they catch you flirting with someone nearby, but otherwise they appear to just be minding their own business. They'll also disappear and move on with their singular conquest after they've won the encounter. The protagonist is out for psychological dominance in a way that nobody else is, even the popular girls. This kind of behavior seems to be unprecedented in the social structure of this school. There definitely aren't any particularly pure intentions for her gathering of these boys. As you can see, she doesn't seem to be very romantically driven towards any one of them, even the popular guys. They all appear to be more like mindless slaves than partners. Her main goal here appears to be power and privilege. She desires not only power over the men, but also to outmatch any other girl in the school. The windscreens show her admirers obsessing over her in more and more cartoonishly over-the-top ways, down to putting on a literal fireworks show just for you. She's also shown to directly gain power from her romantic conquests, as demonstrated by the heart meter. The amount of power she gains increases with the amount of challenge involved in winning their hearts. She will gain much more power from a normal boy with two rivals than a normal boy on his own, seemingly implying that she directly and physically benefits from the psychological warfare involved in the 
this practice. What convinced me of this theory the most is the fact that the immunity item in the festival flirting game is a kitsune mask. A kitsune is a Japanese trickster spirit that can embody several different mythological character archetypes, some of them being menacing and occasionally very similar to the western conception of a succubus, siphoning power through stealing hearts similarly to our protagonist. I think it wouldn't really be out of the question for this character's allure and obsession with amassing a devoted cult of her fellow classmates to be supernatural in origin. Admittedly, this theory falters a bit when you consider that the snorkel mask has the same effect, implying that all you need to have immunity from teachers is having your identity obscured, but really this game has extremely little lore and I need to take any hint that I can get. My most compelling theory for this version of the story is that she was a normal high school girl who became mentally vulnerable while longing to be more popular with boys. The kitsune, or a similar type of spirit, possessed her in a moment of weakness and made her into an unstoppable machine of romantic conquest in order to enjoy all the power, privilege, and pampering that comes with that. I think this fills in the gap of how this girl who looks approximately the same as her peers manages to be so supernaturally attractive. She even easily outclasses the girls who are obviously meant to be rich and popular. My other theory is similar, but also contradicts the first. I call this the Tomie theory. For those who aren't familiar, Tomie is a character by the renowned horror manga artist Junji Ito. Tomie is a malevolent force of unclear origin who appears in the form of a beautiful girl or woman. She preys on the mental weakness of her victims, who tend to be young men, and ultimately drives them to homicidal madness, which allows her to regenerate and multiply. Tomies are capable of captivating her victims with a single gaze, and are highly motivated to entrap anyone who resists her into loving her. I'm just saying, if this concept was turned into a cute cartoon game that's safe for kids, it would look a lot like this. Tomies are numerous and extremely territorial. Each Tomie will be instinctually driven to destroy any Tomie that exists in a citywide radius. So the Tomie theory is fundamentally similar to the demon theory, but posits that the girls in these three games are not the same girl, but three identical but separate instances of this malevolent force, each one hypothetically motivated to destroy each other if they ever happen to meet. This theory does not share a universe with the contest offshoot of the festival game. The whole regeneration thing doesn't really apply here, so that aspect is take it or leave it. These girls could spawn from any mysterious source. These supernatural theories are just for fun. Explanation 1 is almost certainly the one intended by the developers, but man, I just needed something to explain the feeling of deep unease I get when I look at this girl. Now that we've covered what, in my opinion, are the pattern setters for the kissing and flirting game genres, let's discuss what they've become in the modern day. So, before I started doing research on this video, I had assumed, like Flash in general, these games were a dead trend. The reality could not be further from the truth. <laughs> Maybe they're on their way out, sure, but barely. There's still a lot more of them being produced now, years after the death of Flash, than there were in 2008 before the genre really exploded. Now? Well, you know what they say. If it exists, there's a kissing game of it. Let's have a search on Y8. There are a couple of them. Now, my initial conception for this video involved me playing every kissing game that I could find, but... No. Just... No. So why don't I try to find the standouts? To find some of the more historically significant copycats, I took a look at the Internet Archive version of Girls Go Games from 2011. Both the kissing and flirting games appear under the category High Score Games. These also appear in a category called Love Games, which also contains dating, romance, marriage, and Valentine's Day themed games, as well as some that seem like total non sequiturs. I remember in my research for the Devilish Hairdresser video, somebody claimed in some TikTok comments that there was a kissing game for these two, and I'm sorry, but that is just a bonkers claim. Even today, you are going to be extremely hard pressed to find a kissing game that isn't overtly heterosexual. However, these should exist, and so please enjoy these fake screenshots I made. Anyways, let's check out some real ones. The first kissing game that appeared in the high scoring game selection is Kissing in the Classroom. This game seems to have a couple more controls than office kissing, but is, in my estimation, pretty much unplayable. I do not know what's going on. The couple seems to keep mashing face no matter what I do, and despite the instructions telling me to click on these classroom items to create a diversion, they only seem to do anything less than half the time. And why does the teacher not seem to care? Do your peers actually care that much? This seems like a troubling sign of the quality of these games to come. It simply wouldn't be Girls Go Games in the early 10s without some unlicensed celebrity appearances. In the Lady Gaga kissing game, you control an unusually lumpy version of the titular celebrity and kiss while the paparazzi is inactive. 
This game is much, much easier than office kissing to a degree that you barely need to put in any amount of effort at all. This is also highly indicative of the quality of these copycat games. Since much of these later games were made for a child-specific audience instead of a more broad audience of kids and teens, they tend to be much easier. Another of these games is Kissing Getaway. This game embodies a strange trend in these copycat games to just generally make no sense as far as why you would be getting in trouble for kissing somebody in that setting. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I feel like a romantic campfire in the late evening is like a generally well-accepted place that people kiss. For God's sake, in this game you lose health if the owl sees you. I guess it's a little awkward if somebody spots you, but it's not like there's any actual stakes here like there is in Office Kissing. Whoa, H-bomb. The other levels play out in other vacation destinations. We're back to some actual risk again with horse stable kissing, where unfortunately you have to keep your eyes locked on this utterly repulsive boss character to sneak a kiss while you're working in the stables. Please just tell me why on earth this horse is getting so excited. Humans aren't the only ones who get their own kissing games, no sir, as proven with the game Cute Monkey Kissing. In this game you control a pair of visibly heterosexual monkeys as you avoid being detected by this lemur thing, who will take a photo of you, I guess, if you don't release the mouse in time. Everything happening to my eyes in this moment is heinous. Quick pause. Have you noticed that ever since we've departed the first games that set the trend, things have gotten truly and irrevocably fugly? This may just be nostalgic bias, but I swear that after like 2010, these companies just started putting less and less effort into making their Flash games look nice. I just feel like something this hideous would not have appeared on Girls Go Games a few years prior, or at least not as many hideous ones as there became in later years. Flash games had a problem with shovelware from their inception, and these games are shining examples of that issue. There are also several hybrid genre games, like this game Flirty Waitress. While the game is mostly a restaurant management sim, there's also a slacking mechanic where you have to flirt with the male customers while their dates are inattentive. Now let's take a look at some of the offerings available on the Y8 browser. Aerial kissing. We've got some not quite above board usage of the iconic Disney characters and Sebastian just being horrified as all get out by seeing these two smooch. Did he not have an entire song where this specific situation was his stated goal? Well, you can't get caught by Flounder or Sebastian in this game. Have you ever thought about how suspicious this situation must look from the perspective of the person you're trying to avoid? Like in all of these games, when you're not kissing, you're just kind of awkwardly standing right next to each other, doing nothing. And every time that they return, the couple is still just standing right there, doing the same thing. Horse kissing. Lovers always have interferences and problems, even if they are horses. Master doesn't like his horses to get into love, and his wife is standing with him. It is so worst that the parrot he grows is also spying there for him. I hate this. First of all, if you don't want your horses to get into shenanigans, you don't keep your stallions and mares where they can access each other. This farmer is a dumbass. And second, why... Why is this happening? Schoolgirl's first kiss. This game definitely does not use characters from Miraculous Ladybug. Control definitely not Marinette and definitely not Adrian as they avoid detection by their surrounding friends. This game is way too easy to be engaging, but hey, at least the art assets look nice. Kitty kissing? There's nothing, like, vile here, but man, it just feels wrong. Both then and now, it feels really uncomfortable when the characters in these games appear too young or too old. Like, when they're too young, it just feels disgusting. <laughs> Babies, too? But when they're too old-looking in their design, when they look too much like real-life human adults, it also just gets weird. It feels suspicious in intention. Friday Night Funkin' Kissing. No! Why won't you let me play that? Very sorry to report that you can no longer get freaky on a Friday night. Oh, this one looks familiar, and it only needs a little while to stop being broken. As you can see, we've got a one-to-one -one bootleg of Office Kissing. This game isn't nearly as well-built or nice to look at as the original, however, there are several different options for ladies to kiss. Inexplicably, the final girl you can unlock is Medusa. There are a number of other direct office kissing ripoffs here, which are consistently as low quality as they are uncreative. Justin Bieber kissing game. Justin Bieber kissing game. Justin Bieber kissing game. This is a game where you kiss Justin Bieber. As for the literal only non-hetero kissing game that I've ever seen, we've got Naruto and Sasuke kissing. This has a very DIY flash look to it and is extremely simple even for a kissing game. You have to click 100 times before the timer runs out to kiss Naruto and win the game. Not exactly a traditional kissing game, but hey, gay rights. 
Next up, nurse kissing. The art style in this game makes me kind of uncomfortable. The girls are clearly drawn to be very alluring, but the skill to really accomplish that gracefully is just not there. This style also strikes me as overly adult for a kid's flash game catalog. Boy, he's sure going ham about feeling her upper arm. Following a similar trend is bedroom kissing, which isn't actually a reaction time game, but a simple point and click puzzle. Please help to solve them and let the lovers kissing all the time. This imagery just makes me feel really icked out. It feels over the line for a kid's game to prominently feature two characters in this situation. This has gross clickbait written all over it. This last game isn't really a remarkable entry in the kissing game genre, but it's so relentlessly bizarre that I need to bring it up. Unlike most Y8 games, it seems to be formatted for a mobile app instead of a web browser. The game description claims the name of our protagonist is Oprah. Yep, that's Oprah, all right. Look at how insane this one is. First of all, the protagonist characters are... Ugh. And why is her table clearly a large hamburger? Like, you can see the tomato. Every single time that Oprah gets kissed, she's caressing this gigantic hamburger. And <laughs> look at the guy who's trying to catch them. He looks like a cardboard cutout. Why haven't they kicked him out yet? There's no way this random chef dude ought to be permitted to barge into a celebrity's room. Some games, like the generally well-regarded shopping mall kissing, have features that break upon disconnection with the online features that they're connected to, and are therefore inaccessible without finding and removing those features, which is unfortunately a little beyond me. Let's return to Girls Go Games to peruse their selection of Romance Academy copycats. The first I found was Queen of Flirting, which is a direct copy of the first school flirting game. Yikes, this is a miserably bad ripoff. The controls are horrible, the visuals are low effort, and man, with these minimum effort flash games, I feel like a negative amount of effort is put into the sound design. Like, they're hoisting the effort onto me, the player. It's work to consume these horrible sound effects. The controls are fundamentally similar to Romance Academy, but much more jank. The hitboxes on these dudes are all over the place. Instead of following you around, the guys will just continue about their day while grayed out. Instead of getting blasted off into the void, the rival girls will just stay on screen and continue to be a problem, which is obnoxious. Also, the title screen promised me that there would be I-beams, and I do not see I-beams. Whoa, hold on, weren't we in high school just now? They're clearly serving alcohol here, what is going on? Another Romance Academy copycat is this one, Charming Girls. This one has a few more gameplay elements at least. You get to choose a character and you can accumulate money to buy power-ups. Unfortunately, this doesn't make up for the fact that this game has frustrating controls and is just generally ugly. How about Charming Girls 2? Well, it's practically indistinguishable from the first one. This seems more like an update to the first game than an actual sequel. You know what they say, third time's a charm. How about Charming Girls 3? Whoa, okay, now this is a different game. It might still have that slightly janky appearance, but they did go out of their way to make this one a distinct game, both from the original Romance Academy and the previous Charming Girls entries. First, look how much the catalog of playable characters has been expanded. I think I'll go for this Pink Sailor Moon type. This game also added a bunch more mechanics on top of the flirting game stuff, including game modes and missions. They added enough content to warrant using save slots. Unfortunately, this doesn't get the overall quality of the final product much further than the okay mark. A problem that I've had in every single one of these games is that I keep clicking on the rival girls by accident. This is because, for some reason, the girls are colored brightly and the boys are slightly grayed out, the opposite of how it is in Romance Academy, which instinctually makes it seem like they're the ones you're supposed to be clicking on. These nerd boys don't even count, which I find… sad. On Y8, there's Princess Kissing, which is truly an odd title for a game that involves no kissing. This one's the most direct ripoff we've seen yet, with the eye lasers and everything. Like most of these clones, in comparison to the original game, the controls are just miserably bad. Even Romance Academy had some issues with its camera, but these games turn that problem up to an unbearable level. At first I was wondering why this dog was following me around, but then I realized that's what the dudes are turning into. Forget Romance Academy Demon Theory, this woman is a literal witch. Many of the entries in the flirting game genre fall under the slacking games umbrella, using extremely simple reaction time controls. This includes the game Romantic Party, in which your objective is to steal dates. As you can see, it prominently features the flirting game staple of eye lasers. This game may be simple and derivative, but as far as things go, it's actually fairly solid. There was some effort put into the visuals, the timings feel accurate, and it becomes challenging in the later levels. Y8 has a few more Romance Academy copycats. Unlike the ones from Girls Go Games, these ones feel uniformly like they were built directly from the framework of Romance Academy, using notably identical animations, level layouts, and even sometimes not even bothering to swap out the art assets. 
Even though this is lazy, this does result in games that are largely higher quality than many of the attempts that were built from scratch, considering the high quality of the original Romance Academy game. Okay, I think I've had enough. So why is it that this genre exploded in size the way it did? I have two main explanations. First, these games are absolutely dirt cheap to produce. They're extremely simple to make, you can just build them off of the template of a pre-existing game, and more often than not, an absolute bare minimum level of effort is put into the visuals. Second, these games came as part of an overall trend of veering content towards things that generate very high click rates. <sighs> yes, I have to admit it. Although my memories of this genre are generally positive, this did come as part of the overall corruption of Kids Flash Gaming that we saw in the years before 2020. But I suspect the reason these games got so popular is because they generated a peculiarly high click rate over games with more indisputably innocent theming. I would say that some of these thumbnails feel over the line. I feel like the physical contact in a kissing game with a very young core audience should not really arrive at first base, but they seem to be getting a bit more raunchy with some of these, which definitely borders on concerningly inappropriate at times. Some of these thumbnails give you the feeling that people are clicking on them expecting a little more than they're actually going to get. And for kids, that's gross. However, the first and most iconic games of these genres I honestly don't think feel very sinister. These games are very chaste despite their flirtatious content. In Office Kissing, the player appears to be giving little pecks instead of actually mashing face, and Romance Academy literally does not contain any actually seductive behavior. These games, I believe, are pure, and worthy of being considered the quintessential entries of the kissing and flirting game genres. And that's all I have for today. If you'd like to support this channel, please go check out my Patreon. You can get perks like full access to my Discord community and exclusive videos. My newest exclusive video is my first ever video essay never before uploaded to YouTube. It was a film class project made in December 2020 reflecting on the imminent death of Flash, and it definitely set the pattern for the videos that I make today. Thank you so much to Fishcatch, Ms. Goat, Riley Meyer, and Tara Tara. Thank you all so much for watching. Okay, 